Hi guys, it's Peggy from Beauty Lately. So summer is just around the corner and generally that means we'll be spending a lot more time outdoors, whether it's at the pool, the beach, or just having fun out in the sun. In times like this, it's even more important to choose a good sunscreen to prevent age spots and premature aging. But I get it. Looking for a sunscreen is no easy feat. There are so many different factors to consider. What kind of a sunscreen should I look for? How high should the SPF be? Are there any ingredients I should actually avoid? Well, consider this your complete guide to sun care. I'm going to break down all of those questions for you and also share some of my top recommendations when it comes to my personal choices for sunscreen. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, let me start by confessing that I was not always a fan of using sunscreen and I'm still quite picky about which sunscreens I use today. Many years ago when I was in high school and I played sports, tennis in particular, and spending a lot of time outdoors and practicing and hitting balls under the bright Southern California sun, my mom would always nag me about wearing sunscreens. And I just remember this one particular incident where it was team practice and we actually had team photos that day. And when the pictures came out, I was horrified to see that I was the only one with this gray whitish cast over my face because I was wearing sunscreen and it was so embarrassing and I just promised myself from that day forward that I was never going to wear sunscreen again. So fast forward a couple more years after that incident and I was in college and I actually started noticing dark spots on my face and I was only barely in my early 20s and I mean they're still visible on my face today. You can see that I have, you know, hyperpigmentation. And to be honest, this is all caused by, you know, not wearing enough sunscreen in my younger days. And so from that point forward, I started researching a lot more about sunscreen and trying different kinds of sunscreen and, you know, finally came to terms with having to wear sunscreen every single day to prevent things like hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, and also early signs of aging. So what exactly about the sun causes premature aging anyway? To understand this, we have to understand the two types of rays that the sun emits, UVA and UVB. It sounds very confusing at first, so just remember UVA for aging and UVB for burning. UVB is the more obvious culprit and causes things that we usually associate with not wearing enough sunscreen, sunburns. UVA is the more silent but deadly type. It causes even worse things like wrinkles and age spots and also skin cancer. It's important to note here that when it comes to the sun's harmful rays, you're not safe even if you're indoors or if it's a cloudy day. So your best bet is to wear sunscreen every single day. So what does this mean when it comes to reading sunscreen labels? It means that you have to look for broad spectrum protection. This means that it protects against UVA and UVB rays. All right, so now that we understand UVA and UVB, let's move on to SPF. SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it's a unit of measurement that indicates how effectively it protects against UVB rays, specifically sunburns. Now, Here's an important distinction to remember. SPF only measures the protection factor against UVB rays, but not UVA. In order to understand a sunscreen's protection against UVA rays, which, remember, causes premature aging, you have to look at the PA rating. Here's the tricky part. Most of the sunscreen sold here in the US does not indicate a PA rating, but only an SPF rating. If you're shopping for an Asian sunscreen, on the other hand, it will most likely indicate both SPF and the PA rating, which is measured in the form of plus signs. The more plus signs a sunscreen has, the better the protection against UVA rays. Now, just because a sunscreen doesn't indicate the PA level doesn't mean that it doesn't protect against UVA rays. It's just not a form of indication that the US consumer is familiar with or look for yet which is why most brands here don't tend to put it on their labels. Now that we understand the difference between UVA and UVB, SPF and PA, let's talk about how to choose the right SPF for you. A good rule of thumb when choosing an SPF is to evaluate how much time you're gonna be spending in the sun and how likely you are to get sunburned. If you work mostly indoors or you're looking for just an everyday sunscreen, then an SPF of 30 should be more than sufficient. If you work outdoors or are planning on spending a day out in the sun, at the pool, beach, or just generally outdoors, 
then I would recommend an SPF of at least 50 with frequent reapplication, at least once every two to three hours. If you're looking for an Asian sunscreen and are deciding between a PA factor, then I would always choose a higher PA rating, PA++++ for example, to not take any chances when it comes to UVA rays, which causes premature aging. Now that we have all the acronyms out of the way, let's talk about the types of sunscreen that are out there. The two main types of sunscreen are physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and they're sometimes referred to as either mineral sunscreens or sunblock, and they work like a mirror on your skin to deflect the sun's harmful UV rays. Here are some of the pros of physical sunscreens. They are less likely to cause pores, they're less likely to cause allergy issues, and they start working the second you put it on. Now, the con of a physical sunscreen. Because the minerals generally appear naturally as a white powder, these sunscreens are the ones that people will tend to associate with, with white cast or leaving that white film on your face. But don't worry, physical sunscreens have come a long way since my high school days, and I'll share with you some of my recommendations for a really good physical sunscreen that won't make you look like Casper. Now, chemical sunscreens, on the other hand, work by absorbing the sun's rays instead of deflecting them, transforming the rays into heat or energy, and then releasing it from your skin. Chemical sunscreens aren't necessarily bad, it's just that some people don't like the idea of chemicals in their skincare, so they prefer to use physical sunscreens instead. The pros of a chemical sunscreen include being readily absorbed into the skin, which results in a lighter formula, none of the white cast that people associate with physical sunscreens, and also it being very easy to find as it's very prevalent. The cons of a chemical sunscreen is that it's more likely to cause allergic reactions and skin irritation because multiple ingredients have to come together in order to provide that broad spectrum protection that we talked about earlier. So, whereas physical sunscreens start to work the minute you put it on, chemical sunscreens take time after application to activate and start working. So another way to differentiate between physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens, aside from reading the ingredients, is to look at the usage directions. If it says wait 20 to 30 minutes after application before sun exposure, then it's more likely that it's a chemical sunscreen. At the end of the day, choosing between physical sunscreen and chemical sunscreen comes down to personal preference. The key here though is really to choose a formula that you love and will stick with using every single day. If you hate the texture of every physical sunscreen you've ever tried, then try a chemical sunscreen. The higher chance it is you're gonna use it every day if you like the formula. So pick a formula and stick with it. So now that you're an expert in sunscreens, let me give you a couple of my recommendations to get you started. First up is the Kula Broad Spectrum Mineral Sunscreen with SPF 30. Here are some of the features of this physical sunscreen. It has a matte finish and it's infused with cucumber extracts and natural rosehip oil that is rich in free radical fighting vitamin C. As you can see, even though it's a physical sunscreen and comes out quite white from the bottle, it quickly dissipates and blends into the skin and does not leave a visible white cast. Now, because it does contain silica silylate, it does have that powdery matte afterfeel to it, a lot like Benefit's Porefessional for those of you who are familiar with that product. The next physical sunscreen I like to use is La Roche-Posay's Anthelios Mineral Ultra Light Sunscreen with SPF 50. La Roche-Posay is a French dermatological skincare brand owned by L'Oreal and is quite famous already in Europe. Their trademark technology, Celox Shield, provides both UVA and UVB filtering system and also a powerful antioxidant complex to help protect the skin from free radicals. La Roche-Posay products are also infused with mineral-rich thermal spring water that makes it a great choice for people with sensitive skin. It's a super light fluid and provides an excellent base for makeup application, and is also water resistant, fragrance-free, and paraben-free. Now, let's move on to chemical sunscreens. The first sunscreen I'm going to talk about in this category is made by the Korean brand Cost RX. This is their Aloe Soothing Sun Cream SPF 50 with a PA rating of triple plus. It's a super light sunscreen that blends in amazingly into the skin with no greasy afterfeel. 
It's a great choice for people who have oily or acne prone skin. Aloe is also a great hydrating ingredient that calms and soothes irritated and sensitive skin. This next sunscreen is made by another Korean brand and it's called Apio and it's their Pure Block Natural Sun Cream with SPF 45 and a PA rating of triple plus. Now, the name of the sunscreen is a little misleading because it's neither a sunblock nor is it natural. It is, however, a great sunscreen that goes on light, non-greasy, and its hydrating formula is great for people who have dry skin and needs a little boost of hydration. The third sunscreen and my personal favorite that I reach for the most often is made by the Taiwanese brand White Formula. It's their UV protective gel with hyaluronic acid, SPF 50, and a PA rating of triple plus. It's a supremely hydrating formula with three types of hyaluronic acid, and it's a great choice for people who prefer gel formulas to lotion or cream formulas. It goes on almost sheer and blends in straight into the skin. It's an excellent base for makeup application thanks to its great moisturization properties, but it's not greasy or heavy at all. And there you have it, a wide variety of sunscreen for you to choose from, both chemical and physical. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, see you later!